Gators or the Majestic Rider. So let's talk about horse and jobs. The job we have for our horse is to usually take them off on a trail ride because most of us are, are not showing. And so we want that horse to take us on a nice trail ride, walk many miles, not complain, and keep us safe, right? So we have to give them a reason why would they want to do that. So if the horse thinks that that's not a fun job to do, the horse might complain. So the way they're gonna complain is they're gonna not wanna go. So you might think they're stubborn. They might kick out, they might buck, they might rear, they might spook. Those are all ways of telling you, I don't wanna go and I'm gonna scare you so we don't leave the barn. Now when they do those things, a lot of people put the horse back in the stall, the horse wins, and so he does it over and over again and gets worse over time, and then they no longer go on trail rides. And that horse gets a bad reputation, usually gets shipped down the road, and the owner starts over again. What you need to realize is that horse is given a complaint. Think of it this way, you're at work, you work really hard. Every day you think, wow, I wish my boss would give me a raise. Maybe he'll give me a day off. Maybe he'll just give me a longer lunch, something. But that boss doesn't do anything. What that boss does is over time, as you work hard and you show that you're a good worker, he just gives you more work to do because you're such a good worker and you go from 40 hours to 70 hours. Now other people have quit and left and you're still there. So they give me more work to do to cover for the other people, right? And you never get any reward. And sooner or later, what do you do? You either start screwing around on the job or you quit and you go to another job because you've got no reward. So think of it that way also for the horse. So if you want that horse to go out on trail, what would be some nice things that would make him want to go out on trail? Um, so one thing would be, you ride him out there, you stop, get off, graze him, let him graze for 30 minutes. He got a reward. He gets the grass out there, not when he's at home, so he wants to go out on the trail so he can get some grass. Another thing, you ride out there, you get off, loosen the girth, give him some cookies, you walk for a bit. What happened? Well, he got some food, he got some rest, and he got to spend some companionship with you. And for him, that was a reward. But you have to figure out what is the reward for each horse. So for the human, our rewards are usually money and days off, right? bonus check, uh, here's an extra week off, um, or you can get a promotion. The horses don't care about promotion, so they don't care about that. So that's not going to help that, oh, you're a head horse, so now you have to do more work because that's not a benefit for them. So what are the things for them that they think are good? So one is rest. That's why they always want to stay home because they're lazy. Even the goey horses want to be lazy in their paddock. So one is rest. The second one's food. So those are your two motivators, the main motivators. What else could be good for them? Well, they have no fingers, do they? So you could scratch them where they really like to be scratched. And watch where they scratch with the other horses and it's not too hard to figure out where they like to be scratched. So you could say, I don't wanna give them cookies or food or anything, so I'm gonna ride out there, I'm gonna get off my horse and I'm gonna scratch them. I'm gonna scratch them all over. That might work for your horse because it's a reward, but you have to figure out what would motivate that horse to go out. Now, it's the same thing if that horse wants to come back home, because of course, what does he have? He has motivators. He has his friends in the paddock, he gets rest, he gets that nasty saddle off, and he gets that bit out of his mouth. So, these are reasons he wants to come home. He also gets fed at home, there's water at home, and if you give supplements or grain, he usually gets that at home. So, if your horse wants to always come home, what could you do? Well, when he comes home, he gets work. When he gets home, he gets tied up away from his buddy. When he comes home, he doesn't like that saddle, so I'm gonna tighten the girth up more and make it uncomfortable for him. So when you start to think about it, you think about what would help that horse to do the um, work I want him to do and not to do things I don't want him to do. So you have to make it good for him and bad for him or her if you don't want them to do something. But you have to figure that out. So again, for us, most of us want money and uh, so we can buy things and then we want days off so we can go ride our horses. So, you know, going to work motivates me so I can get to do those things. Now, if I wanna go home and rest, what would make it bad at home? Well, it would be if I got home and I had to do a lot more work. Well, then I don't want to go home. I'd rather stay at work, right? Um, if I went home and it was really, really loud and uncomfortable for me, well, then I might, might want to just sit in my car <laughs> where it's quiet. 
So start thinking about what would motivate your horse to go out and what would motivate him not to come home fast. Once you figure those things out, then it can help you cure a lot of problems where you don't have to go to a trainer. You can just start thinking about it. And I always tell people, write a diary, write what happens each day, because then you can look back and see patterns. Oh, he kicked out today and I got scared, so I took my horse back home. You just motivated him more to get home and he just scared you into it. So you have to kind of correct that horse. If you can't correct the horse, you need a trainer or someone to get it done for you, but then to show you what to do. And then as problems start to come up, catch them quickly. Don't wait for it to go on a month. You know, if they're spooking or kicking out, don't wait for they've done it for a month and now you're ready to sell the horse. They spook once for no reason. Talk to the trainer, talk to the previous owner, and see if there's things that you can do to fix those things. But remember, don't give up. Everybody wants, you know, the horse could be great for two years and then they do something wrong and they're like, I want to sell it. It's too much horse for me. It's a, it's a work in progress, right? It's a partnership. So you both have to give and you both take some, but you have to give as well. So if he's been great for a whole year and he does one thing wrong, don't you want to try to work it out? Um, and again, you can ask your trainer, like, is this something I should work out? No, he, he leaped and bucked and I'm 70 years old. No, maybe that's something we shouldn't work out because you got broken and we now see that you need a duller horse even though you wanted the fast horse. Um, but another thing is you go out and he just stops and kicks out. That's something you can work through. That's not so dangerous. So I hope that helps some of you figure out what to do. But again, writing the diary can help you the most. And when people are asking me to help them with problems, I always try to ask them as many questions as I can because it helps me to know, is this a new problem? This is an old problem? This is what the horse had before? Because it takes time to fix those things. It's not like you get the horse and it's a miracle and everything's great like they do in Black Beauty. No, it takes time to get to know that horse. And the best horsemen think about things and try to figure those things out. They read, they watch videos, they talk to other trainers, they go to conferences, and they keep working on things. And then they see if one of those things works for them.